Today in the studio, folks, I got double trouble for you. Mr. Jake Hess, CEO of Solar Academy and the founder of SolarCon mm -hmm. and the number one sponsor, Tyler motherfucking McAllister. <laughs> What's going on? What's up? Not a lot. You guys, you guys cruising around the country making some good content, I see? Definitely. All over the place. Now, dude, if you guys haven't heard of Jake, Jake is a nationally acclaimed entrepreneur. Acclaimed by whom? Uh, myself, mostly. My mom. She loves me a little bit. It says nationally acclaimed. <laughs> I'm yeah. wondering, because I've been in business for quite some time, uh -huh. and I've never been acclaimed. I want to be acclaimed. Well, that's why we're here, bro. I'm going to teach you how to do that. How? How do I do it? <laughs> no, I just travel the country, and I've helped a lot of businesses. And so in my industry, a lot of people know who I am. Um, and that's the solar business. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and coincidentally... You're in the solar business. Yes, sir. And you're the number one sponsor of the solar conference that's coming up. This is the biggest one in the industry, no? There is one, but it's more technical based. It has nothing to do with the people of solar. It has to do more with the products. And so that one's actually pretty big. Uh, How long ago did you start it? Last year. It was our first year. Now, folks, I'll be speaking at this year's event, which is going to be fun as hell. It's up in Utah. What dates? It is April 20th, 21st, and 22nd. April 20th, 21st, and 22nd. So go get your tickets. Where do they get tickets if somebody's listening, they're in solar and they want to go? Uh, AttendSolarCon.com. Pretty easy. Simple. AttendSolarCon.com. Go get your tickets, folks. Show them the bomb squad has some power. <laughs> uh, and then all, obviously all your sales guys are going, yeah? How many sales guys you got? A uh, hundred. A hundred? They all going? All of them that will make it, yeah. Which ones? Which ones aren't? Which ones have the excuse as to not go? Ooh, the ones not committed to their future in solar. Hey, see that, <laughs> folks. Now, SolarCon, what's it about? Mainly, just latest and greatest. Uh, there's just so much. There's just so much growth in the industry. It's actually created these um, this bias in certain products, certain people, different financing, and uh, this bias has actually kind of cultivated a lot of animosity. Oddly. And so the purpose of the industry was to actually unify the industry, get everyone on the same page and understand uh, that we all have the same mission and goal. And, you know, one product is not better than another. Go learn it all. And uh, we just put everything under one roof for the first time. Salespeople with the manufacturers and the financers uh, so they could learn the different products better so they can deliver to the homeowners better uh, than they had been. So uh, and when did you invent this again? Three years ago? No, it was just last year. It was our first year. Last year was the very first one? It, yeah, it was. It blew my mind. Like, I, was, I didn't know why this hadn't been created yet. There was such a need for it, and the demand the demand was there. How many people showed up? 1,700. We See, actually, that's, that's nuts all by itself. Like, it's hard to get 1,700 fools in a room. That was just the attendees. We had all the vendors, too. Um, it was difficult. It was not easy. What about this year? This year, we're shooting for 5,000. Uh, we tripled the size of the conference. We tripled the size of what the What if vendors. the same 1,700 show up? That's going to be a sad day. What if his team don't me? show up? It's all empty in there. <laughs> you know what? You're actually describing some of the nightmares that I have. So <laughs> thank you for letting me relive that. You know, you what you do is you be prepared to remove a bunch of chairs. To make it look full? You always want it to look full. You do not want a bunch of chairs. Listen, I don't care if you have 300 people in a big ass auditorium. If those 300 seats are full, the thing looks full. But when, when you have like just tons of chairs, cause you, you were prepared for a bunch of people and then a bunch show up, but it still doesn't look like, you know, very many cause all the ch empty chairs. So, old oh, 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 Grant Cardone <laughs> taught me that trick. Is that right? Oh yeah. You gotta <laughs> just be prepared to remove chairs. So like if literally, you know, you see people showing up and, you know, at the end of the day, you thought, you know, five grand, we're going to show up, but 3,200, you tell the freaking crew that runs that thing, dude, get, get rid of 2000 chairs. And they'll be like, and then hold, hold the crowd out and tell you do just get rid of those chairs. That's a good idea. I, I want to go the harder route. Standing room only. I want the people to come. What you ought to, what you ought to do is, 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 you know, Try to sell 5,000 seats, but only have 3,000 available. I like that. Then you can be bringing in chairs. Now that's when you're cool. When Lindsay, you're if like, you're watching, please make that happen. Please. Standing room only. <laughs> so, dude, how did you get in the solar business? Uh, I, I was working with a company that I had uh, as part of an equity pool. And they told me if I left my team, 
in the home security side and I went to solar, then I could double dip in the equity pool on that side and sounded appealing. So I made the change and that's, that's what initiated the change. And so you went out and started selling solar yourself? Yeah. Knocking doors. How long did you do that for? Uh, collectively I knocked doors for about 15 years. Um, but that was home security and solar, uh, solar. I started knocking doors in 2013 and ended up stopping around 2016. Now you have solar Academy. Is that teaching people how to do solar? Yeah. Uh, unlike most other training platforms in our, in our space, in the solar industry, uh, we actually teach the technical aspect of it as well. What's technical about it? Um, there's a lot actually like understanding how the electrical panels work on the side of the home, uh, actually has a really big influence on the amount of panels that can go on the roof or even which type of panels to sell homeowners. Uh, some but a sales guy doesn't usually do that. Do they? Um, they can, they need to know what, well, they can also the mow the lawn, but it doesn't mean they do it. <laughs> <laughs> the, qu the, qu the question is, is like, you know, if I'm going to get in the solar business, do I need to know all this technical? No. And so kind of our niche is we teach people how to be, how to become the top 1% in the industry. Everyone can go in and start knocking doors and, and just by their own personality and drive, they can get sales. Right. But how do you become more efficient at it? And how do you, how do you impact more lives and get more accounts and, and make your financial situation better at home? Right. Everyone, everyone jumps onto the dream of making all of this money so they can have this awesome work life balance. Um, but they never want to change anything. They want to just go and do the grind every day and they never want to change what's in their head and what they're capable of doing. So we wanted to create a platform where they could refine their skills or that ambition or drive they have and make it more impactful and efficient. Mm. And your, your team, you have a fusion power and your team is just sales. You know, you're not an installer. We're an installer. Oh, you're an installer too. Yeah. We're vertically integrated. Oh, nice. So, so well, we need to talk then. All right. Yeah, because I got salespeople. I got salespeople up the yin yang. What I what I need are like fast installers, quality installers. That's us. Good. I'm Every a, company says they're quality and says they're the best, but I've been to his operation, and I'm telling you, it's like a machine. And uh, more importantly, the one running the warehouse uh, was just telling everyone how thankful he was for them. Just really, you could sense the emotion and the and the genuine. Um, part of him coming out and relating to everyone there and, and they were receiving it and they were, and it was beautiful. I had never been in a warehouse where I was like, wow, that's great. Is, is the warehouse where you keep the glass? Yeah. Now, do you have to keep a bunch on stock or no? Mm -hmm. Who, who do you buy your glass from? Uh, we have a, we have a couple different places. Um, Would you be open to another see, one? Yeah. What you got? Well, I'm coming out with real solar panels. Let's check them out. Yeah. They're, they're not just, fake. Huh? They're not fake. No, they're not. They're <laughs> yeah. real. What? And I'm thinking, <laughs> like, work. I'm thinking out of uh, everyone that's going to get solar, they'd probably want them to be real solar panels. I mean, we like real panels. Yeah. Well, see, that's why I'm that's calling them that. Dude. We're already on the same page. <laughs> they're just going to be, they're just going to be black on black on black, cool looking. But on the bottom right, they'll just have my real logo with the rhino. Have you ever seen my real logo? Oh, yeah. Anyway, I'll show it to you, but it's like real, and then the glass, real solar. So you had right. it manufactured in... Basically, well, I'm thinking about it. I, is it I, a white I, label panel, or yeah, you actually... Yeah, yeah no, I'm, we're not doing it. But I'm, I'm finding someone that can do it, and making a deal with them, to where supposedly it's a pretty good deal. But we'll see, because it what might if, be a pain What if I ass. do it? Go ahead. Oh. But you wouldn't have real panels. Oh. Uh, you know, yeah, panels. fusion panels. <laughs> <laughs> you know, fusion panels. All Those right. are just like the rest of them. Dude, you want real panels. If you're going to get solar, you want it to be real solar, don't it, you? It is hard to trump real panels. Thank you. That's why you, should, you could be, fusion could be the, one of the exclusive, one of the exclusive dealers. <laughs> if you don't wait. carry real solar panels, I don't even know who you are. Like, what are we even <laughs> doing? Dude, how do you have um, more than one exclusive dealer? We actually have a really cool solar panel I'm su super excited about that has been custom created that is going to completely demolish Tesla solar panels. Well, I'm creating a solar shingle. Me too. Already done. So it looks just like a roof. That's pretty cool. We got you into that. Ours no, just an idea. Yeah. Well, we've been at it a while. You know what I also tried to invent? Prescriptive uh, sc screens. 
Like, you know how you got to put on readers sometimes when yeah. you get old and you, to read your screen? Yeah. Well, what if the screen itself was the same prescription as that reader? You could just, just dial it in wow. and make it clear. That's pretty cool. Doesn't work, though. Oh, why not? I don't know. I haven't found a, uh, someone that does it because supposedly the way this, the way glasses work, it has to get near your eyes and all this other shit. Huh. But I'm in contacts. I like inventions. I, I have several that I've never done anything with, and then I've I've had several that I didn't do anything with that somebody did and made millions. Number one, this thing right here on the back of that phone. When these iPhones first came out, I'm like, dude, there's got to be something we can create to where it won't slip. Because remember, it kept falling, yeah. slips and shit. Crack your phone. So that my buddy made love handles makes a ton of money. Another one um, that that literally made a fortune is called tinder that dating app like 15 years maybe 20 years ago i was saying we should create an app this right when apps were just being created there wasn't very many out there i'm like we should create an app where like you upload your picture and then the guys can sit there and scroll through the girls and then the girls can scroll through the guys and whenever you think i would and it was going to be called i would whenever whenever you think in your mind damn i would then you just hit hit the button i would and then they will hit i would and if you guys match it'll shoot you each other's phone numbers that's legit that's the hard part is like are you attracted to me am i attracted to you that's the hard part i know but if i scroll through a bunch of pictures i'd be like boom i would i would i would and people like i would what well you know whatever date them i would say hello you know take them out <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> whatever you want to say you would do but i would I would, I wouldn't, and you just keep scrolling. And ba basically, that's what Tinder is, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, for those watching, JH149, please, lover, JH149 on Tinder. No. <laughs> I've never no. had a Tinder account, dude. Hey, listen, if I, if I were single in the world of Tinder, I don't know if I'd ever be married. I hear that thing is just. You are don't you guys have both single? to be on are you guys Tinder. Both single? Oh, you're married? 15 years. So you ain't been on Tinder either. I've been, I've been on some platforms. I've done it. <laughs> I hear they work well, do they? They work really well. Like uh, any town you go in, you can just, you just whip, whip, whip. I would. Dial I would. Up. I would. <laughs> yeah, so I invented it before it was ever a thing. Sounds like a lot of should ofs though, Brad. A lot of should ofs bro. That's why, that's why the difference between massive companies and great ideas is action. Because there's a lot of great ideas that no one does anything with. If I would have done that, I would have made some dough if i would have done that i would have made a bunch of dough there's another one that i haven't made but it's getting close and i see it coming and someone's going to do it eventually but I, I used to call it final approval which ultimately is i register your credit card with final approval if your credit card gets used it'll text you before it gets approved it doesn't do that right now it tells you now it notifies you that it just got used but how come it doesn't give you final approval See what I'm saying? Mm, so you yeah. walk up to a machine, you swipe your card, card goes to the bank, bank says it's okay, comes back approved, ching, ching, and everybody's happy. Well, it should just bypass to the phone now and just gives you the final approval. So the bank says yes, now it comes to you. If the bank says no, it won't come to you because it ain't up to you. It's you not the, you yeah. ain't got the dough. But if you got the dough, then it comes to you. Final approval, they go, yep. And then it'll go through. That's a really good idea. And it'll, it, fuck yeah, it is. And it'll stop identity theft. Yeah, this is going to say, it's talk about all the fraud and everything. And it's the reason I invented it is because uh, at one point in time, my daughter took my Chevron card, which I never used. I, did, I, I don't even remember having a Chevron card, but I had a Chevron card and she took it. And I'm like, and then finally I get a phone call. It's, you know, Chevron, you going to pay your bill? I'm like, what bill? They're like, you know, you have a $1,400 bill. I'm like, $1,400 for what? She said, well, you've been charging all over this and that. And I said, where? And she said, oh, up in Eugene, Oregon. I'm like, oh, okay. I know someone who lives there. <laughs> so so I called and said, did you use my credit card? She said, yeah, of I'm course like, I did. I'm like, damn. So I had to pay it. But wouldn't it have been nice had I just got notified the first time she swiped it? And gave me final proof because it would have said, hey, do you want $18 worth of gas? Because it was $1,400 over 18 here, 25 there, 30 there. It was just whack, 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 whack all day long. Looks like she went grocery shopping a couple times on that, on, you know, at a gas station. But if it would have just shot me something that said, is this okay? I would have said no. It would have killed the card and I would have saved $1,400. 
it, we're getting close though because you're getting notified when you when you when you charge shit. But the problem is, is it's too late. It's already charged. Yeah. Well, and then also, um, I, I've been dealing with this recently. It just happened at Bellagio. The card gets declined, and I have to sit there and call the bank and say yes, that was actually me, or no, it was not. And it's annoying. It's uh, actually sometimes it's embarrassing. You're with someone. You're like, oh, I, I've got the money. I promise. Like it's there. Just let me call, and then. That'd be nice if it just came right to the phone. Yeah, well, we got to teach it, bro. You don't have to worry about stuff. Like if I ever, like if one of my cards, I've never had one not go through, but if they ever <laughs> like not went through, I wouldn't sweat it at all. I'd be like, damn dog, you, you got this then? <laughs> oh, I should like, do Fuck, that. Dude, huh? That sounds good. Are you guys one of those types that uh, split bills or pay the bill? I pay it. Same. Yeah. Or, or let someone else pay it, but I don't split I don't, bills. Yeah. 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 That's another sign of a, I, I wouldn't say player, but someone smart, someone cool. It's not worth, it's not worth the, you just have this really good experience, right? With these people, it's not worth the awkwardness at the end to end the night. But with, dude, right? you'd be surprised how many weirdos are out there that'll be like, you know, um, uh, are we all going to go Dutch? Like, you know, uh, <laughs> did you have a salad? Did you, who had the salad? <laughs> It'd be like, fuck, this is embarrassing. Yeah. Just pay the bill or don't pay the bill. I'm okay with either one. But if you ever eat with me, I guarantee you, you'll you'll watch me pay the bill. Most of my people that I eat with frequently get pissed because they don't even see me pay the bill. Because what I do is I walk into the restaurant, and as soon as the waiter's walking off from the table, I just go and hand them a card. I have a question. So I, I like to do that, too. I like to cover the bill. I don't know what it is inside of me that feels almost obligated to do it for my own self. It's not like the table's making me feel that way, right? Well, Sounds I, like you're I, the same. I am the same. And it's because I like to order whatever the fuck I want. <laughs> I'm serious. Like I, if, if I know you guys are paying for the bill, you know, I'm just going to get a steak and maybe, you know, a side, you yeah, know, but if you. I'm, if I'm ordering, or if I'm paying the bill, well then I'll get whatever I want. I'm going to get like all kinds of appetizers, all kinds of salads, you know, all kind, maybe two or three different kinds of steaks or, or meals. My wife says she married me. One of the reasons she married me is because I'm like that. We went to sushi for our first date and you know, they came over with the big sushi menu. And I said, you know, bring some of this, some of this, some of this, some of this, some of this. She couldn't believe it. She, she's a foodie. So she just loved that. But yeah, dude, that's why I do it. I pay because I'm going to order what I want. And if, and if I'm not paying, I don't feel comfortable ordering everything. Makes sense. I feel rude. Same. But if I'm paying, like, doesn't bother me whatsoever. 100%. Plus, I mean, dude, I make some decent coin. So what's, what's, what's the problem? That's true. So now solar, let's get back to the solar industry. Now, for, first of all, if you guys are listening to this podcast and you're not in solar, I would say, you know, hit me up. <laughs> I can get you in solar <laughs> pretty easy. I even know someone who can train you. Hey, on, on everything yeah right yeah i know several people actually danny pessy i know several people yeah um that can train I, I, including you but i don't know i don't know i have to look at your technology before i could before you know, i could recommend you last time i was in here and you showed me light speed i really love it but i've actually given the solar academy uh to someone that someone else runs it and owns it now so i'm just getting passive income off it i'm just messing with you you, you can, Good. you can, you can run <laughs> inferior technology. It doesn't matter. Ooh. <laughs> That's okay. It is, it's usually for only for people that really want someone to learn. That's why they use light speed. Cause they want people to learn. Oh, that's what you get it for. So Any, yeah. If you want them to learn, like really want them to learn. If you, <laughs> and then if they you use just want real, them, and then they use real solar panels so they can actually really get solar. Yeah. But, but that yeah, is not even near what I'm saying. This is a fact. That's just a marketing play. Okay. This is real. Only Lightspeed out of all the platforms that are out there is designed to get people to actually learn through repetition, practice, and accountability. The rest of them just host a video that you watch. So that's the difference. That's anyway, what we'll talk Tyler. about it later. Well, I was telling Tyler that right before we came in. I was like, my platform is there's a title and you click on it and then the video pops up and you press play and that's it. Yeah. Your platform is actually asking them and taking them down a funnel of exactly what they well, feel it, that they it, want to learn at that time. Well, it could, if you make it that way, you could also just host a video just like the other ones. And believe it or not, a lot of my customers, that's what they do. They just use it like the rest of them. But that would be like sitting in a Ferrari, listening to the radio, waiting for the bus. Mm. Cause they don't realize the thing works. You know, they think it's just a nice seat with a stereo. 
even though it drives. But I'll close you later. <laughs> I, I'll find out who's on there and we'll talk more later. But um, I'll, I'll get you on Lightspeed one of these days. Do you use Solar Academy or no? Mm -mm. What do you guys do? Uh, we have our own training platform and I train personally. What, what platform is it? Uh, it's our own CRM we've built. CRM? Well, there's two different things. Um, it's not a licensed product. It's so not it's, something people are out buying. It's so it's, it's just, just we we've created our own platform, like a, like a internal training. It's a it's a Frankenstein freak. Do you have do you have leaderboards? Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. So you can earn points and shit. No. What are leaderboards? Uh, stats, rankings, numbers, reporting. Yeah, but it doesn't earn points. Earn badges? No. It's What's boring. it do? Just report. No, I want that cool stuff. We don't have that. What does it have? If you have ranks and badges, how do you rank? It has to, it has to count somehow. I mean, it's going to show you where you're ranked on the year to date of sales and you're going to be in this org based on how you're doing. All the different KPIs. Are you, are you looking for people by the way? Yeah. Fusion. Yeah. Fusion solar. Where do they find you at? I am Tyler McAllister. I am Tyler McAllister on or, social media. Fusion Power has an Instagram page. Just type in Fusion Power. Fusion, just like it sounds, I bet. F-U-S-I-O-N. Yep. Mm -hmm. And pretty soon they're going to have real solar panels. So <laughs> you guys will be in business. They better. You just got closed. So, 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 Jake, back in the day before you got into this, what were you doing? Before I got into solar? Yeah. I was just doing home security. Before that? Oh, I worked at Olive Garden. So you went from Olive Garden to selling like home security, which is alarm systems. Uh, yeah. Was it Vivid? It was Vivid. Yeah. Actually, home security helped me at Olive Garden. Uh, wow. I, cause I, cause there was a little time where I had to overlap them. I wasn't great. It's at funny because we just ate at Olive Garden, Olive Garden yesterday. You did? My kids, for some reason, love Olive Garden. They create know. a culture there. They love the food there. They freaking love the Alfredo sauce <laughs> and those breadsticks. <laughs> they create a culture have you had there. Their, uh, it Descana? No. Uh, I, when I go in there, I don't even hardly eat. Uh, uh, because they don't have anything healthy. Right. Like last night I got salmon and it was not even, it was weird tasting. Wasn't quite there. I didn't get to eat, but no, I don't eat. I don't really eat at Olive Garden. I have eaten at Olive Garden and I love their, their Alfredo sauce. It's freaking unbelievable. That Alfredo sauce is, is good. But when I was working there, every single table would start to walk away after taking the order. Like, Oh, one more thing. And I'm like, Alfredo sauce. Like, yeah. I'm like, okay. <laughs> I tipped the waiter 500 bucks yesterday. Our that. bill was, our bill was $93. And then, you know, those little things that you can check out with now, you know, it's around Christmas and he was a nice guy. And, you know, I said to my wife, I said, well, when we sat down, he said, my, my name is Vincent and I will be your waiter. And I said, lucky you. Oh, cause I knew I was going to tip him good. I didn't know how good, but anyway, those machines, they would only let you go up to like 200%. So luckily I had cash in my pocket because I just wanted to make sure he got a nickel, you know, for Christmas. He was t saying he had to go to his daughters in Chicago and, you know, the guy's waiting tables. So, so he's obviously wanting to make money. So anyway, I like Olive Garden, but I don't eat there. I don't know why that came up. Oh yeah. Olive Garden. <laughs> that's where you worked. I then, worked there, yeah. How did it help you at Olive Garden? Uh, that's where I actually learned that it's not about customer service. It's about their experience uh, that they're having. Cause everyone was like, how are you getting so many tips? Like, how are you? I was tripling the tips that people were getting. And I said, it, cause it's not about making sure their glass is full. I remember a table came in and um, this lady was drinking diet Coke and all of her friends started making fun of her saying she was addicted. So I said, Hey, uh, you're going to get one diet Coke. That's it. I'm going to monitor this thing. And they're like, Ooh, Ooh, okay. One day. And she said, she laughed and she drank it and I didn't let her get refills. And I, you know, I played it with the table and everything. And, um, at the end of it, I ended up bringing her a to go cup and, but they all had more fun, uh, taunting and teasing and, and the experience is what mattered, not the customer service. Customer service is keeping it full the whole time. Right. Uh, that, that gets you minimum tips. The experience is what changes everything. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if I'd agree with that. <laughs> no, I don't know. It depends on like the person. If, I'm, right? if, I, if I'm drinking diet Coke and my waiter's telling me I can't have another one, <laughs> I'll be like, you know, you better hope I'm not the one tipping. <laughs> it depends on the person. You have to read the table. Right? Yeah, but if I'm tipping, I want that bitch full. That's, Everyone's that's experience. experience is my experience be would be bad if you were making all my friends make fun of me and not give me my damn 
free refill. You know what I used to do as a waiter? Cause I used to be a waiter. I used to look Where around, like if you wanted a, a refill on milk or, or, you know, Coke, I would look like, I got you. We're not supposed to, but I got you. Even though we <laughs> totally could, I'd say we're not supposed to, but I'd, I'll, I'll hook you up and I'd look around, you know, get your refill. They were like, bang, tip me more just because they thought I was hooking them up big time. <laughs> hey, thanks. Can I, get, can I get another one? I'm like, yeah, I'll get you. <laughs> <laughs> I got freaking paid though. But the biggest, I'd say waiter hack that I used to do was when I sold desserts, have I ever told you that? I love, no, you didn't tell me, but I heard, heard it. it. Yeah. So, so dude, that, that's the one that I just killed everybody. I got way more tips. I sold, I, I made bonuses because they wanted you to sell dessert. So basically I sold the dessert. Tell Tyler is like, good... wa- like a thousand, all the waiters combined couldn't sell as many desserts as I would. And they could never figure out how I was doing uh-huh. it. And they'd always be listening to me. And trying to hear what I'm saying, but they never could. And when I was quitting, they came up and they said, dude, you know, tell us how you were doing it. And I said, well, you guys are asking everybody, you know, at the end of their meal when they're, when they're stuffed, if they want dessert and they're saying no, half the time I was asking people when they were hungry, if they want dessert and I was having them order it ahead of time. And literally they were like, oh my God, that's genius. And I'm like, is it like, you know, asking them for desserts when they're hungry is not genius that's common sense but most people don't have any but but solar is a big industry dude you can make a lot of money in solar and uh and i know a lot of people that are making a lot of money in solar guy named tyler McAllister, you know him he's uh he's making it's pretty important he's making some dough in the old side where were you what were you doing before solar i was doing alarm systems with vivint so alarms just transferred right into solar huh yep so did you guys work with Todd Peterson? Yeah. Uh-huh. Were you, are you guys Mormon by chance? I am not. Dude, a lot of Mormons up there freaking got into the old solar business. And Mormons are great for door to door salespeople. Yeah, they own door knocking machines. machines. <laughs> they're not they're, they're knocking <laughs> machines and you don't you don't get offended when someone says no. Yeah. My brother's Mormon. He says my family used to be Mormon, but my Catholic grandmother changed my grandpa, which changed the whole family. Oh. But not him. He said he's still Mormon. But yeah. dude, if I were going to start a door-to-door sales company, Utah's the place to dude, do. I'm it. going to Utah. <laughs> I'm getting me some Mormons. So, so Vivint was what eighty percent Mormon. You'd think. You'd think. Yeah. Is Todd Mormon? Yeah. So that thing blew up. Vivint, and and again, I I have a Vivint at my house still to this oh, day. Do. Vivint Vivint alarms. Yeah. Um, what happened with that? There's someone got in trouble for something. What happened with Vivint? Uh, they just sold. They're yeah, they it. just sold for a little over yeah, but $4 There was billion. some sort of scandal with Vivint. What was it? You There's know? speculation all the time. I, I don't know. I don't think they're... I don't think Are they're you guys being politically yet. correct because you don't want to say anything? I Todd is in the news and following us around. I'm afraid to say it. No. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't think it was Todd, but there was something about Vivint. I can't remember that was like, dude, that sucks. Mm. But no, Todd Todd made a fortune, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He made. And he built that from scratch, didn't he? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah, I was there back in 2005. There was about 100 people in the company. It was actually called Apex at the time and uh, just watched it explode. Just explode. Tell yeah. Todd to come on my podcast. I'd like to hear his whole story. Oh, yeah. Okay. Me too. The guy's amazing. Yeah, well, I, all I know of Todd is he was supposed to speak at 10X with me, a couple other speakers, and it was Todd Peterson from Vivid. And I'm like, oh, it's that. So I started looking him up. And he ended up not speaking. He canceled. Mm-hmm. And he canceled because Grant said something to one of his people about being fat or something rude. And Todd said, <laughs> I, <laughs> sell I, a I, I company for he $4 literally, billion, He, he literally that. canceled because Grant wasn't nice to one of his people. And I thought, I like that guy already. I mean, he can kind of do what he wants. Todd doesn't have to do anything for yeah, anybody. So Todd, so Todd apparently... Uh, kind of pivoted and had some big party up up in the top floor instead of talking instead of the conference yeah and which which um you know i'm i suppose there were quite a bit of people there coming to hear him speak buying tickets to it so he just said i'll throw you a party up here that's todd style yeah yeah he seems like a cool dude he is he's way cool i love todd so you guys got you guys got trained 
door to door for years. How long? Um, I did nine years of door to door before getting into solar. Now see again, dude, like that's some experience right there. Yeah. You know, I always tell people what's the best training. Not, door to go door out there sales. and do it. Yeah. Well, just doing it like knocking on a thousand doors is way better than any course you're going to get. Yeah. I would never give up my education from knocking doors. I think it's a thing that has defined. I've knocked on doors uh, when I was a kid. Fortunately, I didn't have to do it long because I don't like it. And the only reason I don't like it is because the way they answer the door. You know, a lot of rude some bitches out there. Yeah. I mean, you just get numb to it. Yeah. I mean, I did. And I still, you know, would. Right. I preach the same yeah. thing. I try to ch- tell people, don't worry about it. But at the end of the day, it does kind of wear on you, doesn't it? There are times. Well, it creeps, yeah, it gets wit. to you. It can creep in sometimes. It can really seep in and like it, damage you at times. Especially, yeah. what about the law? Because like, like when, when you're pulling into my neighborhood, yeah. there's it's posted. Yeah. No soliciting. Sure. Ordinance, da, 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 da. So if someone's in there, the, the cops will come. Yeah, I mean, obey the law. And get, get but how do you knock on doors if you're not allowed to? Well, you just knock where you're allowed, and then you get your permit so that you can go do it legally. Oh, you can get a permit for that? Yeah. yeah. Oh, see, that's well, just a hustle would, the city's doing. Well, not every neighborhood's posted like that. I mean, a lot of neighborhoods aren't, and a lot of cities don't even have um, permits to have to solicit. So. Did you ever close somebody with a no soliciting sign on their door? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Always. Definitely. They're the biggest laydowns. That's why they put up the sign, <laughs> no soliciting. Yeah, they know yeah. if you're coming that, that they're buying. So, all right. So, did you guys know each other at Vivint? No. No, we actually did a training this morning with some people that came to our room, and uh, we didn't. He just found out I worked at Vivint uh, <laughs> this morning. <laughs> was there, yeah. was there like a, a legend at Vivint? Like where everybody knows that guy? There's a few of them, uh, right? No, it wasn't me. It wasn't Jake. Who was it? The legends, uh, I mean, probably Casey Baugh, Jeff Mendez. How much did they make? Millions. I don't know exactly, but they millions. were crushing. What'd they end yeah. up doing? Um, they in solar now? My understanding now? is they got bought out and paid to go do something else. I'm pretty left. sure Jeff Mendez doesn't uh, do anything anymore except go and speak at, at you know, things that people ask him to come to. He makes money off of them. Now, all now we're, all those, we're all you guys 1099 independents? Yeah. Yeah. I'll be damned. Statutory uh, non-employee, I think is the term from the IRS that allows that. Hmm. Are all your people the same? Yeah. So if if yours grows to to be as big as Vivint was, would that make you happy? Yes. Is that your goal? <laughs> Do you have partners or no? Yeah, partners. I have two partners. And were they from Vivint too? Yeah. So did Vivint care that you guys are doing it? Because don't Vivint have a solar company now? They do. Um, yeah. I went, I went from Vivint Solar to another solar company. My partner was at Solar City. Uh, my other partner came directly from Alarm. So there was, there's no <coughs> conflict of interest. Obviously, they'd want to keep their people, but um, they had just left Arizona when I was coming into Arizona. So it was a vacuum and ended up working for another company at the time and then created my own company. So it's there for a year. I'm convinced that almost every solar company in the country is either run by a Vivint person or was trained by someone that was in Vivint and trained them, and then they opened it. I think yeah. there's only one degree of separation there. Well, Vivint's like old school. Like, there's kind of ones that started it all. Yeah. Who, who was around back then? Alarm Co? Uh, ADT, uh, Brinks. Monotronics. Monotronics, yeah. I knew people that used to just stick the sign in the yard that would scare people. <laughs> Just that sign. Yeah, the sign The sign was pretty valuable. I would say it's one of the, the sign and the stickers in the window, are, I would say, are probably the most valuable part of the security system. The do other you, part do is... You guys ever, do you guys ever, like, log into people's houses and look through their cameras? All the... T- no. Somebody <laughs> does. I know some fucking perverts are out there <laughs> doing that. Creepy. Huh? That would That's be a bad. Creepy. I know, but they know your codes and shit because they came out to set it all up. I was yeah. messing with the dude. Like, dude, how, how, how do I know you ain't going to be listening in and shit yeah i bet you there's some wacky shops yeah. that are doing that that's i don't want to think about that one they do well, let you change it though they dude, let you change it they, if your house is monitored by any kind of service just remember they can be listening mm. look at the uh latest on the twitter files you guys watching those unfold yeah, yeah. no who, but I who, did. who's been monitoring your social media the fbi the fucking feds dude is that nuts that's nuts the fbi 
Like, dude, that's bullshit. They're not supposed to be doing that. That makes you rethink a lot of the access you give to people. Dude, did you hear Tucker Carlson the other day talking about uh, JFK was killed or was the CIA was involved in JFK's assassination? Mm-hmm. I did not hear that. Oh, yeah, dude. Go look up Tucker Carlson. He, oh. ju- he just said it on fucking Fox. Wow. And it's coming out. And, like, nobody seems to give a shit. Like, dude, I don't get what this world's coming to. Like, nobody cares that we're heading down a bad path. Like, again, FBI's monitoring your shit. Like, that's not okay. All this shit the Twitter files is saying that they basically literally suppressed a whole half of a conversation to to allow people to win. Like, that's that's manipulation. That's collusion. That's it's not good, man. We don't want that. Yeah. But what do you do? Like, if that government's that powerful... You're just effed. <laughs> what do you do? You keep your mouth shut and keep on sailing? What do you do? I think you get involved and you vote. You, you get it. Well, no, way. voting ain't going to help, dude. Like, <laughs> no. Voting's not going to help. You don't think the president's really in charge, do you? No. Yeah, hell no. Yeah. But anyway, let's, let's, let's not make it political <laughs> or no one, will, no one will share this. We'll get suppressed. Let's go back to the business end of things. Because at some point in time, you know, you... Now, so Solar Academy, how long has that been going? Started that in 2019. I actually, uh, we we sold out a conference and we had to refund all the tickets because COVID shut everything down. That was luckily when I decided to build a conference-based business. It was right before COVID hit. Oh, perfect. That was great. Nice timing. So went virtual, tried going virtual, and then because everyone was stuck at home in our industry, um, Everyone decided, you know what? I'm going to become a mentor. <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'm competing against a thousand other people that have been in solar for a day and they all wanted to be mentors. So what do you think the number, the top three things to win in solar are? Uh, knowledge is going to be the number one. Uh, learning everything. Knowledge or action? Okay. Yes. Action is going to be number one. Yeah. Because uh, no- knowledge is is really worthless unless it's applied right that's, yeah that's true i forget who says it but someone says if learning leads to knowledge you're a fool if learning leads to action you'll be wealthy who said that i don't know somebody did i did like what i think it was einstein that said the more that i the more that i learn i the less that i know or something like that because when you're constantly studying you just open up new worlds that you didn't even know existed and you, you begin to understand that your knowledge is so finite compared to everything that's out there. Do you guys uh, read and train every day or no? Mm-hmm. You'd be, you'd, you'd be on that. Oh, no, I do every day. I, I'm Right now I'm studying nuclear, though. Nuclear? Nuclear. Nuclear what? Uh, nuclear energy. I think, you know, if, if something does happen to solar, I need a, <laughs> I need a backup, right? What could happen to solar? Uh, just dude, if something happens to solar, we're all fucked. Nuclear energy is actually actually providing m- most of the energy out there right now. What are you Crazy, talking right? about? Yeah, all the nuclear reactors and everything. A lot of energy comes from the sun, right? A lot of the, the wind is formed from the sun. The sun for the solar panels. Yeah, but I wouldn't think nuclear is the number one power source out there. Do you? I mean, if you consider the sun, let's nuclear. ask Siri. <laughs> let's see the sun is nuclear. That's what I'm getting at, but. Having nuclear reactors here here is actually the cleanest way to, to generate. You want energy. nuclear reactors? I'm saying it's it's clean. What's the number one power source in the world? The sun. Fossil fuels. Fossil fuels. You read fuels. it wrong. It's the sun. No. <laughs> no, fossil fuels. It is it is here, but um, there's this book I'm reading that argues that the sun is actually the one that does it. Is well, the one that that's why I said nothing's right. going to happen to solar because like nothing's going to happen to the sun. And if something happens to the sun, guys, we're all in trouble. We're in a lot of trouble. Yeah. It's we're not, not going to worry out. about energy <laughs> when the sun goes out. Yeah. So I don't think, I don't think solar is going anywhere, but, but more prevalent, meaning I think everything will eventually be made out of solar. There's cars now with the roofs that are basically solar panels and they'll, you know, power the cars. And I think the sun is where it's at personally. Yeah. It's clean. You know, it doesn't, doesn't burn. I'm all in for solar. Nuclear, that's dangerous. You get a leak, you could die. Look at, look at, uh, what was it called? Three Mile Island. Uh, that and, um, 
The one that's Japan. always in Call of Duty. Oh, uh, um, Chernobyl. Chernobyl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to fuck with nuclear, bro. Even though it is a it is a serious power source. Mm-hmm. You really want to mess with nukes? No, I just the government actually funded more into nuclear than they did into solar recently. Uh, is, what's that? Is the is the logo on your hat your logo? Yeah. For which one? Uh, I used it for a company that I sold called Helio Gold, and when they took it over, they didn't want it, so I used it for the Solar Academy. That's right, huh? So, yeah. so like, if you were to go to solaracademy.com, can I sign up right there on the spot, or do I have to call somebody? You can sign up there. You can go. The lab is another um, is another one that funnels people into the solar. The academy. lab. The lab. dot com. Mm-hmm. You own the lab. dot com. I think it's the lab. It's um, my good one. my CMO. He's he's the one that created it. I, I just promote it now. Yeah, but if you got the lab, that's a pretty good one. Um, I have a bunch of URLs just in case. But the Solar Academy, folks, the Solar Academy is where you go sign up for training. Yeah, solar training. If you're in the solar business, you want to get better. You want to learn a little more technical angles. Technical but, and sales. Uh, I would, I dominated some sales too, knocking doors, selling homeowners, closing them, setting appointments. So we kind of try to cover all of it. And then if you want to work in the solar industry, Tyler's got a company called fusion that'll hire your ass. <laughs> Will they be 1099 guys too? Yeah. Do you pay salaries or no? No. Commission only? Yep. Dang. Big boy stuff. <laughs> yeah. If you want to get serious. How's your turnover? For recruiting? No, how, yeah, like how, how's your turnover? Like in, uh, the, in the industry, not yours, not fusion. People leave, good people stay. Our retention is really, really high. We have the number one solar guy in the entire country working at our company. Our guys make really good money. Training's top notch. Uh, operations is phenomenal. Customer experience is great. Guys sell a deal, they get referrals from their customers because they're actually happy. Uh, you don't have to be afraid to type in our our company URL on, you know, people look us up and they is, it, is the industry pretty shitty like that? Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's not so great. I mean, just massive growth happening in an unregulated but, but who's industry. out there doing the, 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 the shitty things like just rogue companies that aren't really putting in real solar or what? Uh, there's just a huge separation between the sales companies and sales organizations. And usually install companies don't have the ability to create their own sales. And so they completely rely on, sales organizations to come in and feed them and then they're going to let them get away with whatever they do because they're desperate on their sales. But, but, but what type of things are they getting away with? Um, it's actually, it's actually an, it's an omission of knowledge. Again, they, the salespeople don't know uh, exactly how the tax credit works. So the one that ends up paying for that is the installer because the contract is held between the homeowner and the installer. Right. And so if they don't get these tax credits or the loan doesn't work out the way it was supposed to, then then they're mad at the installer loans. For example, you have to get, you have to get licenses. If you're going to give auto loans or if you're going to go uh, be a realtor, you have to get licensed for that. Right. In solar, I could go hire a barista from Starbucks and they can start selling $150,000 loans tomorrow. No license necessary. And Who's the loan from? Uh, there's massive organizations out there. The largest and most well-known I would say is good leap. Um, and they're, there's four pillars to solar sales, install manufacturing and finance. There's not one company that does all four of them. And so uh, each of those four pillars has uh, companies that. Not even Tesla? Not even Tesla. How come you you guys don't make one of those? One that does all four? There's just way, way, way too much involved. Way too much. I just like the sales arm. (laughs) Like all I'll do is I'll sell it. Someone needs to install it. I like that position. And, and, And by the way, I mean, I think sales needs to be ethical. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, you know, with the right training and training systems, yeah. you can bring on people that can, you can show them how to make two to $500,000 a year relatively easily in that business with complete ethics and integrity. Yeah. So anyone looking again, fusion's an option, go to solar con, learn more. Do you get a lot of people going to solar con that uh, aren't really in it yet? They're just wanting to see it or the, all, all solar people go. Um, it's all solar people are starting to open up to the idea. Just being year one, uh, we've got a lot of exposure, right? Obviously the industry's talking about it now, but a majority of the industry did not go. So you have your, 
people that are inquiring and wondering what it is, wondering if they should go, if there's value, then there's people, you got your negative people, you know, but then a majority of them are buying into it now and really loving the concept. Uh, so who else is speaking there? Um, your friend, your, your man that you hooked me up with Andy Elliott. Oh, Andy he's Elliott. He's a beast. Yeah. Who, who else? Oh my gosh. I went into that office. They picked me up off the ground and threw me into their ceiling. <laughs> they were like tossing me up and down and it was fun. That was pretty cool. The energy that they have is just well, dude, they, they, they want to train. They want to train solar people. So I love it. Yeah, yeah. So like you could make a deal and have them in solar Academy, but you'd I, have to be on light speed <clears> for that. I hear light speed's kind of the source for everything in solar. Is if, that? You're, if you're cool, <laughs> um, if you're cool, if you're not cool, then, you know, what are you on? Like Kajabi or something? I don't know what, I don't know what my guys built. They built something and we're on that. I don't, I'm not good at that stuff, so I hired people for it. We'll swap um, you over. What's that? We'll swap you over one of these days. Well, you showed me last time I was here. You showed me how it worked, and I think I think it's necessary. I think we need it, but I don't own the company anymore. I just get passive oh. income from it now. I saw I saw something on Facebook or uh, Instagram the other day What's about, that? about it. Was that right? I, yeah, I forget. It was like a commercial or something. Must must have been a really good commercial then. If you forgot about it. <laughs> Maybe it was an image. I forget, but it was, so, it was definitely solar Academy. Cause I was thinking, dude, is he on light speed? If he ain't on light speed, I got to close <laughs> his ass, but good man. So, so what else, what do you guys want to talk about? What questions do you guys have? Well, I just want, I, I've just gotten to know you a lot better since I started coming in here, you know, listen to all your content and I'm, I'm quoting you now. You have some really amazing stuff. One of my favorites is, um, if you, what is it? If you give up, I'm drawing a blank now. I just quoted it this morning. You don't sacrifice for what you want, what yes, you want to sacrifice. You. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's one of my faves. That is, that's a beautiful message. It is, isn't it? If you think about it, man, it's powerful. And and you go on to elaborate about um, uh, some of the things like you talked about six pack abs, right? If you don't want, if you want six pack abs, but you're drinking beer and eating cookies and eating sandwiches, then then that's what you want more than the six pack abs, right? You're sacrificing the abs for where that. That's right. And it's, it's a tough pill to swallow, which is crazy because you think, okay, I want the abs. It's a tough pill to swallow to actually look at your actions uh, are the answer and not, not what your desire is. Right. Well, dude, there's a way to get the abs and eat the shit food. It's just called moderation. Like I like go try to eat one for example m m you know go go eat one <laughs> bite of a cookie go eat one <laughs> lick of an ice cream no one does it and it's very hard to do well that's that's what gets you the abs is discipline so if you went out and did your exercises like you should and you ate you know fairly good for you know most of the day and then you had a bite of ice cream I guarantee you, dude, you can still get abs and still eat like shit. You just can't eat a, you know, a lot of shit. So there's the discipline. So what I'm hoping for is uh, you to bring this kind of, this kind of conversation and knowledge to SolarCon. Uh, if, if I wasn't following you, when did we start coming here? So it was like a month ago or two months ago. I started following you November 15th and so much of what you've been saying, how did I miss out on this stuff? Right. And so I love the idea that you're going to come to the solar industry and just instill a lot of this knowledge into an industry that I, that I am heavily involved with. And if I didn't see some of your stuff, like how much are we actually losing out on? Right. So I'm excited for you to come. I guess my question to you is, um, have you thought about what you're going to say to everyone yet? No, I usually, I usually figure it out right when I'm walking out. <laughs> I, I, I do. Right. Only because you never know what changes and what, and you know, I don't have speeches. I just kind of talk based on something that I'm thinking while I'm there watching, listening to the person before me, asking questions, what, what they're there to learn. But I can also, you know, prepare something specific. If you, if you say, dude, I want you to talk about this, then I'll just come out and talk about that. No, I, I don't, I don't. And, you, and we can, I just don't do that because I want people to be ex very passionate about what they're talking about. If you give them assignments and they're kind of confined to this role, right? Yeah, not me, unless you give me a dumb one, <laughs> but I'd still make it fun. Um, you know, one time my buddy has me come speak and I said, uh, what, do you, what do you want me to talk about? And he said, training. 
And I'm like, fuck, dude, nobody, nobody likes to talk about training. Nobody gets excited. There's going to be nobody crying. There's not going to be anybody laughing. It's not going to be a kick-ass fucking talk. You want me to talk about training? He said, yeah. So I went and talked about training and sure enough, dude, people were laughing. People were crying. (laughs) They were still, they were still, you know, into it because I don't have a, a speech. I just, you know, bring up a story or I tell a story about training or how did I learn that? And why is that important? So Nowadays, I'm thinking people need to learn how to build a personal brand. Like you should have a personal brand. You should have a personal brand. Everyone should have a personal brand. He could have a personal brand, but not very, not very many people do it. Outside of my company, like me brand myself. Okay. It's funny you say that because. Like you guys follow me or do you follow my companies? I follow you. Exactly. After meeting you. I'm not going to follow your company. People don't follow companies, dude. Yeah. I'm not following Fusion Power. No, you I'm follow following people. fucking Tyler McAllister. Is it McAllister? Yeah, Tyler motherfucking McAllister. Yeah, and then and then when they follow you, they're like, oh, he owns Ty- uh, Fusion Power. Like people people learn about Lightspeed by following me. People learn about my other shit by following me. If I were trying to get them to follow my company to learn about me, it wouldn't work. Yeah, mm-hmm. and 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 I'm telling you, you go look at anybody's company and then look at them as an individual brand. Th- th- it's always Like, go look how many followers Lightspeed has. Not that many. And, dude, for a while there, I was pushing it and pushing it and pushing it. And it's like, nobody cares. So I literally told my social media, don't worry about Lightspeed social media. Just worry about mine. Yep. (laughs) And then, dude, started skyrocketing. And I'm telling you, if everyone just went out and worked on their personal brands in three to five years, which will happen anyway. That's what people don't get. In three to five years from now, it's going to be three to five years from now with a brand or without a brand. Well, and I think too, with that, it, it's also, I think you're sharing the psychology of connecting with other people. It's like, you can't just go build this thing by sitting in a dark room by yourself and hacking away at a computer. But it's like, you guys need to come meet Brad. You guys need to come meet Jake. We got to go to come to Las Vegas and invite people to come say what's up. Like I got to know people I don't know and increase your circle. So that's one thing I think is, um, apparent in building the business is really learning from other people, meeting people, just getting out in the space and, and um, putting yourself out there because I don't know what will come with this relationship, but it's, it's um, you've got something to offer. You have a product that offers solutions to, you know, things my company's trying to solve that improves me right there. And then you have a platform and I can benefit from that. But uh, Jake's got a phenomenal conference that I'm able to, uh, you know, be a part of and support this guy and what he's building. And, and that connects me with a whole bunch of people and opportunities that, serve me in, in a lot of ways that I'm grateful for. So I think connecting one thing I it's learned non pitching <clears throat> event, it's a non pitching <laughs> event, but Your connecting members. is super important. And one thing I, um, I will say back in the culture of the Vivint days, it was very much like you create a cocoon around your own office or, or you don't let the secret out and you really hold everything in. And I think that's been flipped upside down where now it's a platform of sharing and, like, hey, I want to attach myself to this person because he's got a ton of value to offer and everything I hear Brad say is fire and I want to learn from this dude and like, what is he doing in his life? Like, I want to be successful here. So I think just having a mentality of giving and sharing um, it ha- is breeding a lot of wealth in the industry and I'm learning that as I'm going, but really just putting myself out there. Um, and well, then ex- well, execution is really important. I think you're big on execution is, okay, you have this idea and this thing now, like, let's make it happen and making sure you're surrounded by people that can execute with you. Well, I'll give you an example. So like you're the top sponsor. Yeah. Are you speaking? I did last year. I haven't decided if I'm speaking or my CEO. Someone is. Yeah. So again, I mean, if you're building a personal brand yeah. and you're not speaking, that would be a, eh, that don't make sense. A miss. Okay. Like mm-hmm. you're going to see fusion. I'm sure everywhere. Yeah. But everyone's going to walk by fusion. Yeah. Fusion. But you up there talking, that's who they're going to connect to. That's who they're going to pull out their phone. That's yeah. who they're going to say, dude, I want to work right. for this guy. Yeah. Like, I don't want to work for Fusion because the name's so cool. Fusion. Yeah. <laughs> like, it, Fusion reminds me of, like, nuclear or a mix. Like, like a, I forget what they called it. Japanese Fusion or, anyway, food. Yeah. And okay. fus- yeah, yeah, Fusion. Yeah. Like, there was this one place that that they made this weird ass food and they called it fusion something and and it was like the weirdest food ever 
like now that's everyone all they're gonna think about is food fusion yeah they'd mix like a <laughs> like no a, fusion power makes me think nuclear yeah because that's how you make nuclear fusion that's true it's the power of the sun brad not fusion fusion the power sun is fusion yeah but fusion is the power of the sun or i mean fusion is nuclear power which right? is the power of the sun yeah the sun is a nuclear let's see <laughs> siri is the sun nuclear i gotta turn up my volume <laughs> Is the sun nuclear? Here's what I found from Wikipedia. The sun is a main sequence star and as such generates its energy by nuclear fusion of hydrogen nuclei into helium. Boom. That's why I was saying nuclear is the most power powerful sources because oh, the sun is nuclear. This is a fancy way of saying sun. <laughs> nice. Well, good. I learned something. Fusion. I didn't know the sun was nuclear. Mm. That's pretty cool. Fusion power, baby. Fusion power. Now, now, real quick before we wrap it up, I want to know about these benefits of having solar. By the way, if you guys want solar, anybody needs solar, wants solar, call me directly. DM me, hit me in the DMs. I'll get you hooked up with some solar. <laughs> I will. Brad has a very large solar company out here. Hey, uh, listen, I jealous. know where to get solar. <laughs> I, can, I can know many places to go get solar, but it's who wants it. That's what I want to talk to. I want to talk to the people that want it. Then I'll figure out who gets the deal. <laughs> hey, I think your audience is better off coming to you for people that want to sell it and they should want to sell it because it's one of the fastest growing industries in the United States right now. It's for growing sure. exponentially and there's a need that exceeds uh, the number of people we have in the industry. So 100%. Um, yeah, it's a big, it's a big opportunity it really mm -hmm. is. If, if you're out there not making at least a couple hundred grand a year, now people are like, Oh dang, that's a lot. No. Listen, first of all, if you're not making a couple hundred grand a year, I would strongly consider looking into solar. Now, yes, it's hard. Yes, it's knocking on doors. Yes, you're going to have to sell. Yes, you're going to get beat up. Yes, you're going to freaking have, you know, a little trial and tribulation. But so what? Like everything worthwhile is going to be difficult. Keeps in the your beginning. heart beating, dude. It's the only reason you get paid so much is because it's hard if it was easy. And not only that, like I, I'll train you one thing that'll that'll keep you protected. What is it? Basically, who gives a fuck what everybody thinks? Like when I knock on a door, I didn't like it, but you know, when I knock on a door, if someone was open the door and they're all pissed off, number one, they don't know me. Yeah. Number two, I got to understand you can't make everyone happy period. So if you know, you can't make everyone happy. Now you have to choose who do you, who do you make happy? So do you make them happy or them happy, her happy or he happy, she happy or him happy, mom happy or dad happy? Like who, who are you going to make happy? Well, you, you, it's difficult to choose. So why not just choose yourself? Ooh, choose yeah. yourself. So now you, so now all you have to do is wake up every day and make yourself happy. And then when you're like, well, what about, no, 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 don't worry about whether anybody else is happy. Now people say that's selfish. I don't believe it's selfish. I think it's selfish not to, because if, if I'm looking to you for leadership or anything else, and you don't know that rule, dude, you're, you're not as good as you could be. Right. It's like putting your own mask on first. They want you to take care of yourself first so you can be coherent to take care of the other people that need you. It's like filling so, your well with water so you have something to give. It's exactly right. So so when it comes to me, it's like when I wake up, I don't try to figure out how to make my wife happy and how to make my employees happy and how to make my clients happy and how to make everybody happy. I try to figure out how, to make, how do I make me happy. And if I'm happy, then it overflows to the rest of y'all, which is why everybody you know, calls me, uh, got it. calls me happy. <laughs> I was going to ask, you say that your network is your net worth. You say that quite a bit. Uh, don't you have to make other people happy in order for that to have that network, right? You make yourself happy, bro. You make yourself happy. If you're happy, doesn't matter what everybody else thinks. If I'm not happy because you're happy, am I really your friend? No. So if I'm really your friend, dude, you being happy is what's the best. So it'll weed out people that shouldn't even be in your life. Because if you're pissed that I'm happy, dude, you're, probably, you're probably not too supportive anyway. Yeah, You're mad because I'm happy. You're mad because I'm happy? Oh, let me guess. You should be happy over me. Yeah, yeah, that's what I believe. Oh, oh, okay. Thank you. Oh, fair enough. Fair point. Selfish, huh? That's a good point. That's right. But most people that knock on doors, they get all butthurt when someone doesn't like them. And that's literally what keeps them from the business. 
I've talked to people. Why don't you get into solar? Ah, oh, dude, I don't want to knock on doors. People answering the door when they're eating dinner and shit. I'm like, I know that sucks being interrupted <laughs> right in the middle of dinner. Like nobody wants to be one of those guys, but I'd rather be one of those guys than a broke mofo. That's that's for sure. And not only that, I don't care. You know, I'm not bothering somebody. I'm helping somebody. I'm not knocking on that door to interrupt your dinner. I'm yeah. knocking on that door because I notice you don't have glass on your fucking roof. And if you don't have glass on your roof, that means somebody less than has came to this house before or worse, nobody. And I want to be the first. Allow me to introduce myself. <laughs> What's your name? And boom. And I'm going to start building a relationship. And not only am I going to sell them solar, I'm going to sell them roofing. I'm going to sell them siding. I'm going to sell them garage doors. I'm going to sell them front doors. I'm going to sell them freaking pooper scooper. I'm going to sell them pool service. I'm going to sell them landscaping. Why? Because once me and you are connected, dude, you're my guy. Everything about your house is, is me and you. A buyer is a buyer. Like I'm just going to be a home solutions company. Like, I don't give a rat's ass what your problem is. You want Christmas lights? Gotcha, dog. <laughs> the beauty of knocking doors is for these people, for the first time in their life, it puts them in the front seat of customer acquisition, business acquisition. They're learning how to take something out of nothing, out of thin air. You can walk down a street in a neighborhood and turn it into thousands of dollars in a day. And that skill set alone right there, just learning that customer acquisition skill set is what's helped me build a, a multi-million dollar company. Just learning that from walking down the street. So there's so much potential and opportunity. If you look at the people who have created hundreds of millions of dollars in the industry over the last 17 years I've been in it, I've watched it happen. It's just that, that skill set is the foundation of entrepreneurship. And they get to taste it and feel it and experience it for the first time. And what they can create from that is, is phenomenal. So if, if you just pin it down to knocking doors, their perception of that is so small, but what it can become and what they're actually learning to do is what billionaires are thinking about, like customer acquisition, how do we get more people? And that's, you experience it firsthand. So it's a, it's a really cool opportunity for anyone that wants to get involved in it. Yeah, and if you do, just go to bradlee.com forward slash solar. <laughs> <laughs> or go to solaracademy.com solar con get your tickets go follow jake at jake hess h-e-s-s -S, on instagram you can follow tyler McAllister. he is at i am tyler McAllister. i a m i a m i a m tyler McAllister. m c c a l l huh one c one c m c a l l i s t e r there you go folks appreciate you coming in Thanks, Brad. Thank Have you, a Brad. good time. And as always, till next time, keep it real. Dropping bombs with the real Bradley. Subscribe now.